The Mega Man X Legacy Collection Volume 1, containing the first four Mega Man X games. And Mega Man X was the first time we saw Mega Man done in 16-bit. Of course, technically speaking, these games aren't about the original Mega Man. They're about a later incarnation of Mega Man that's no longer an android or a robot, now referred to as a Reploid. How exactly a Reploid is different from robots earlier in the series? I'm not entirely sure, but I'm sure it's a difference that's meaningful to someone out there. But anyway, we're gonna talk about the first four Mega Man X games here in this collection, and we're going to do them in order. Starting with Mega Man X. And this had a ton of hype before it came out. As Mega Man was a beloved series, and many people were very excited for the first Mega Man on a 16-bit platform. And while the core gameplay of Mega Man X remains very similar to the original, there are a ton of differences here. First, there is no Dr. Wily here. Instead, you're fighting a Reploid named Sigma. And all of Sigma's minions that you fight are animalistic in nature for some reason. Apparently, Reploids are big on being robot furries. Or maybe it's just their designers. I'm really not clear if Reploids are self-replicating or manufactured in some way. Mega Man X also introduced a lot of new gameplay mechanics. For example, starting off with a relatively small life bar that was upgraded as you found specific items in the levels. Instead of having E-tanks, you instead found sub-tanks. And rather than be full automatically, you had to collect extra health while on full health to fill your sub-tanks. You could also cling to the side of walls and jump off them, or slowly slide down them. Some of the stages changed depending what other stages you'd already completed. But the biggest difference of all was that you could find upgrades for Mega Man X. A leg upgrade that let you do a dash and dash jumps. Chest armor halving damage. A helmet that let you break special blocks. And of course, a more powerful blaster. That not only let you charge up your weapon more, but charge up all of the enemy weapons you collected. It really did feel like an upgrade from the original Mega Man series. Not just in a graphical sense, but in the sense that this was a bigger and more sophisticated game than what you'd played on the 8-bit NES. It was a very strong starting point for what was to come later. Mega Man X2 was, in a lot of ways, more of the same. And it resumed a tradition from the original Mega Man series, in that all of your powers and upgrades that you got in the first X are gone when you start X2. Well, almost. You do start the game with the ability to dash from the first game, still equipped. So apparently Mega Man had to do a factory reset? Except for the dash lags, you got to keep those for some reason. And apparently between this game and the last game, something happened to Zero and you have to go collect all of Zero's parts. When first playing this, I thought that might mean that you get to play as Zero at some point, but that doesn't come till later in the series. I guess to avoid being a rehash, they made it so all of the X upgrades did something different this time. And that worked out pretty well for three out of the four at least. The helmet telling you where secrets are was very useful. The lags allow you to do a dash while in mid-air. It takes a little getting used to at first, but it's probably the best idea in this game. There's now two different upgrades you can get for the arm. You have to choose between them, though. And which one you go with is really a matter of how you play. The armor is the only part I did not care for. It made it so you taking damage slowly charged up a weapon that would attack everything on screen. I understand the idea behind this, it just never worked out very well for me, because most of the time I would forget I had it. Overall, I don't think this is quite as strong of a game as the first Mega Man X, but it was a worthy sequel, and it's also a very difficult Super Nintendo game to find these days. And while we're on the subject of hard SNES carts to find, Mega Man X3. This was the first game that actually allowed you to play as Zero. At least during small sections of the game you could play as Zero. It would have been nice if you could just play the entire game as him, but still it was very interesting and novel to play as him at all. 
Again, Mega Man is stripped of all his upgrades at the beginning. But when you find them again this time, they've all been upgraded for the better, with the lags now allowing you to dash straight upwards. The armor, of course, reduces damage, but in addition gives you a little force field around you after you take damage for a few seconds, which reduces damage even further. The helmet seems like a further refinement of the radar from the last game. On the stage select screen, the helmet makes it so it tells you what things you still need to collect in a stage. Very useful when you're trying to find all of the upgrades. Only one blaster upgrade this time, but it lets you have two charges ready to go at once. In addition to the regular upgrades, there are also chip enhancements added this time. There's one that further enhances each of your upgrades, but you can only have one activated at once. So you have to choose between taking even less damage, or having a second in-air dash. Or maybe you prefer to always be slowly healing. Or perhaps a bigger blaster is more your style. And if you want to find everything else in the game first, you can actually get a chip that imparts the benefits of all the chips at once. I've heard you can actually get Zero Saber on X in this game, though I'm not exactly sure how you do it. This was the last X game on the Super Nintendo, and it really was pushing the limits of the system at the time. Sadly, at the time this came out, I didn't pay much attention to it. I never had played this game before playing it now, in this collection. At the time, I had become very big on RPGs, and I overlooked this great title, sadly. But the same cannot be said for our last game here, Mega Man X4, which I played extensively on the PlayStation. And this game started out a little differently, because it gave you a choice. You could choose to play as Mega Man X and have an experience that was a nicer looking version of what you'd played before. Or you could play as Zero. And not just for small sections of the game, you could play as Zero through the whole game. And this is not just a cosmetic difference, as when you play a Zero, you have no range attacks starting out. And playing a Mega Man game with a melee weapon is an entirely different experience. Other elements of gameplay are different as well, as Zero will not find your standard for upgrade parts, nor will Zero get boss weapons. Instead, after each boss, Zero will learn to do a new trick with his saber. In my opinion, this made playing as Zero the much more interesting and worthwhile experience. Not that there was anything wrong with playing as X. But after playing through the three earlier titles, playing as X here didn't really offer much in the way of something new or novel. And that's not just an idea that occurred to me now when playing them to make this video. This was also my reaction back on the PlayStation 1 when I first played this over 20 years ago. And it didn't help that it kinda seemed as if they were running out of ideas for what Mega Man's upgrades would do. Like the lags allowing you to hover in mid-air, because it's always been a dream of everyone to hover in mid-air. Your helmet upgrade was at least interesting here. Making it so your boss weapons were all infinite as long as you didn't charge them up. There was a code you could put in on the character select screen that would make it so when you got the first upgrade as Mega Man, it would put you in the secret ultimate armor. And while that is an interesting novelty, at least for a little while, I still think playing as Zero is the better option in this particular game. And that is the Mega Man Legacy Collection Volume 1. Much like with the Mega Man Legacy Collection, Volume 1 is by far the stronger of the two volumes. Maybe one day, if I'm feeling particularly masochistic, I'll play through Volume 2 of the Mega Man X Legacy Collection, and make a video for it just like this one. But you shouldn't hold your breath for that one. Please do subscribe, comment, like, and tell your friends.